Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Hustle is Great. Coming back at you on this lovely Wednesday, November 16th, 17th. I, I'm starting to lose track of days. But pretty much today, what we're going to talk about is getting leased on with a driveway company. Now, we all know the year 2020 has been definitely a year to forget uh, with all the lockdowns, the uncontrollable numbers and the coronavirus going up and down. It just really, really, really made things a challenge for us, like making a decent income. But today, I'm going to talk about another stream for all my guys that sell in the transportation logistic business, uh, driveway companies, the pros, the cons, uh, how you could be effective at it for us, like making some money to stay afloat. But I sincerely suggest that you don't make it a full-time gig. Just use it as like a get by type of gig. But anyway, what is drive away? Drive away is pretty much the notion that you're going to take one unit from one part of the country and move it to whatever destination or other part of the country that you need to go to. So for example, let's say you get on with the driveway company. You get leased on after you go through the background and the drug screening and your MRV report. You know, they just pretty much check to make sure you don't have any recent suspensions in the last three years, accidents and stuff like that. And you get leased on. And you get your card or however they gonna pay you, data, EFS card, who knows? But those are the main two sources of how they pay you. EFS cards and calm data. But let's say you get on and you get your run. It's coming out of Elkhart, Indiana. Elkhart, Indiana is the majority of, of where all of the driveways come from. And they say they're going to send you to California. What's going to happen is when you get to your unit that you're going to transport, you're going to have a bill of landing, landing, whatever the hell it's called, and usually a dealer acceptance form. Now that is used to pretty much go over the inspection of the current state of the vehicle upon time delivery. Uh, you're supposed to go over the vehicle for your pre-trip inspection. When you're going over, making sure the VIN number matches what you have on your bill of landing, your keys, everything like that. And making sure that you're staying up to date with your logs. I use Keep Trucking. A lot of guys are old school, so they probably do the old school paper logs, which is just as good as two. So after you do your pre-trip and all that good stuff, you're on your way. Now, being a driveway driver, you also are an independent contractor, which means that you're responsible for getting to the unit and also making your way back home or to your next run when you're done with the delivery of the unit. You also have to cover your own lodging and your own fuel. Now, some companies, they give you a fuel surcharge to kind of help along the way, but just keep that in mind that pretty much this is a job that's driven off of people who already have some type of income built up. So I wouldn't recommend this job if you're flat broke. I wouldn't recommend this job if you're like trying to get into the transportation world because it is pretty difficult and it is not easy to do. So number one, you wanna make sure you have enough cash flow set aside to actually do drive away. Because like I say, I did it one time, I did a run from Elkhart, Indiana. No, no, I did Glassboro, New Jersey to Westminster, California. I delivered a Penske straight truck. It took me four days and the run paid me $3,600. Now I know you're probably looking like, oh my goodness, $3,600, that's pretty decent. Out of that $3,600, I had to get to New Jersey. So that's you buying a ticket at the last minute. So from St. Louis to New Jersey, my plane ticket was $237. So that's 237 already out of my pocket. Then the fuel cost, I want to say I was at 
$1,100 between Diesel and Def. So you got $237 for your plane ticket, then $1,100 for fuel and Def. So you are already at $1,370 out of $36. Then I had to fly back home because they didn't have any routes that was appeasing, so I came back home. My plane ticket leaving Los Angeles that day, this is that day was six hundred and sixty seven dollars. Now I could have waited what was that? I delivered that on a Wednesday. I could have waited till Friday when the plane tickets was like one eighty nine, but I would have had to spend another hundred and thirty dollars a night for hotels. So there's no way you could beat it. You're still gonna come out with the money. And for as a train ride, I'm not taking the Amtrak. I'm not paying three hundred dollars to ride a train for two days. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so these are the things you have to keep in mind. So yeah, the offer was thirty six hundred dollars, but I spent out of that thirty six hundred dollars, like I say, eleven hundred for fuel, two thirty seven to get there, so that's thirteen seventy, and then six sixty seven. So basically, I made seventeen hundred dollars for my time, and. So much money I left on the table just to make $1,700. So when you think about it, I damn near broke even. I made a little bit of money, but between the plane tickets and the fuel, actually, I spent more on the truck and getting to the truck and getting home after the delivery than I actually made on the run. Because I made $1,600 for myself, but I still spent over two grand for it's like transporting the truck. So these things you got to keep in mind. Also too, some companies out there, they will let you have access to a load board. They got a lot of companies out there that will actually, you know, tell you like, hey, you need to call in or you might get assigned a dispatcher. Now, I think it's better if you could just log in and see the loads because everyone is gonna say that it's non-forced dispatch but for some reason, some companies tend to try to put runs that's been laying around for a while on you. And when you ask if there's anything else, they'll probably say something like, well, this is the only thing I have available. And that's not the case. For instance, I had a situation where I was like, okay, what do you have going right now that's non-CDL? She was like, okay, I have something going in Minnesota. And I was like, that's it? And she was like, that's it. Now, this company I was talking about, I'm not going to name them. They pretty much share a load board with another major company. And when I pretty much went straight to them and cut them out, they told me they had 59 CDL runs that was available. So with that being said, that gave me the impression that she was trying to put that run on me because it was probably a priority run. And dispatchers are trying to do things like sweeten the pot. They try to put an extra hundred or 200 bucks on the run. That means that it's been sitting for quite a while just to get somebody to take it. But you have to understand you are an independent contractor. You don't have to take everything. You don't have to take anything. If you're looking at something where you can't make a little bit of money on, then it's not worth it. Like I talk about that long run I did from New Jersey to California. Yeah, it paid me $3,600. But like I said, out of that $3,600, I had to pay up front, <clears throat> you know, for my plane ticket, my fuel, and my ride back. Got to have money to do these runs. Granted, they gave me 50% uh, up front, so I got half the money up front, but still, you got to think about these things, man. So, uh, oh, another thing. Amazon now, because mainly people know me from either doing ship or like how I just crossed over from like my culinary field to do uh, Amazon box trucks. Amazon now, excuse me, is uh, in the process of actually doing the same thing they did with their vans on the box truck side. 
So I probably got the numbers wrong, so don't quote me. But I believe I'm making a video. You want to be ashamed of yourself. Come on. <laughs> Come on. But anyway, she didn't want attention. But anyway, Amazon is, yes, that is making a video. Amazon is taking the same approach with the box trucks that they did with the uh, vans. Now, I think it was, you had to have $10,000 and Amazon would provide you with the vans, but you had to get like 40 employees or something like that. And they gave you to a year to do that or meet those requirements or they pretty much terminated the contract with you. Well, Amazon is starting to do the same thing with the box trucks. So I was talking with my father-in-law about this, but uh, I read up on it. What they're going to do is you have to have thirty to forty thousand dollars in cash or liquid assets ready to go as a down payment and they're going to fly you out to seattle for a two-week course it's either a week or a two-week course on pretty much how to become a franchise partner with amazon for us doing box trucks now the box truck operation are overnights they start at well, when I was doing it, they started at 12 o'clock at night, which we call wave zero. And they typically run until like four o'clock. You have some straddlers that have routes around like 6 a.m. But that's only like if somebody dropped the route. But usually it's from 12 to four. So what Amazon is starting to do, they're starting to cut out the independent contractors and just pretty much build within their own mainframe. So what they're doing are they're looking for investors pretty much who has the working capital to pretty much buy in to a guaranteed six figure plus earnings because it is money to be made. So like I said, man, I'm gonna look into that and figure out what else is going on. But this was just a video, man, to give you guys something else to look at. If you ever thinking about it, I salute you for doing it, but you have to understand that this is a field that you need money to be successful because if you hop in the field you low on cash or you don't have any money you are going to struggle mightily mightily as always man it's the great hustle aka rello see you guys later